Well, hello everyone. Praise God. Thank you for joining me today. This is the day that the Lord has made my favorite scripture and I will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. I'm going to rejoice and I'm going to be glad. Hallelujah. But this is the day that the Lord has made. Glory to God. And I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. It's a good day to give God some praise. It's a good day to give him some glory. Hallelujah. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Do you have breath this morning? Well, give him some praise. Hallelujah. For the Lord is good and he is good all the time. Hallelujah. Well, before I get started, I want to wish all you mothers a happy Mother's Day. Praise God to all the mothers. God bless your day. May today be very special for you, bringing showers of God's goodness to your life. Abundant love, abundant peace, and abundant joy. The kind that not only fills your heart and your day with rejoicing, but blesses your heart forever and ever. Happy Mother's Day and be blessed. Have a blessed day. Praise God. Praise God. Well, this morning, I want to take these few moments to encourage you and admonish you and to let you know, BLCC, that I'm praying for you and I miss you and I love you. Praise God. We're continuing working to get the church back in order so we can get back in the church in person. And I just want to let you know how much I love you and I'm praying for you and your families during these difficult times. Praise God. Saints, continue to trust God during this time. Praise God. These are difficult times. All kinds of things are happening. The world is in a bad shape. But praise God, I admonish you to continue to pray. Continue to pray also for our president, all those that are in authority on a national, state, and local level. Praise God. Continue to pray that they make good, good, right decisions that we might continue to serve God in peace. Hallelujah. Pray, saints. Pray, pray. Pray for our nation. As I always say, it's praying time. If there ever was a time we needed to pray, it's right now. The fervent, righteous, the righteous, fervent prayer of the righteous availed much. Praise God. So let's pray, saints. Continue to pray. Praise God. As believers, we are not panicking. The last thing we want to do is panic. But we are praying. Praise God. It's praying time. I declare that we're not walking in fear. We are walking in faith. Praise God. We will come out victorious. We are more than conquerors through Christ that loves us. We have the victory. Praise God. Praise God. As you can see, I'm just so excited about what God is doing and what he's, he's going to do, what he's already done. Hallelujah. Well, before we get into the word of encouragement, let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for being with me and for being for me. Holy Spirit, I yield myself to you, spirit, soul, and body. Praise God. I'm your instrument, your vessel, your bond slave, your servant. I, however you desire to use me on today, Holy Spirit, I purpose to be sensitive to your leading, your guiding, your unction, and your voice. I purpose not to grieve, vex, quench, or quiet you, but allow you to flow freely, freely in my life. And fulfill the perfect will of God. All of you, Holy Spirit, not me. Your will, not mine. I decrease in order you increase. I die in order you live. And I give you all the glory and I give you all the honor and all the praise. It goes to you, Father God. Holy Spirit, I ask you to breathe the breath of life on the words that come out of my mouth today. That they will cause change, change, change in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Oh my God, praise God. And we 
talked about trust. We define trust as confidence in, relying on, and leaning on God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Last week we told you that life is full of storms. Praise God. We learned that storms will pop up anytime unexpectedly. We also learned that we are either heading to a storm, we're in the middle of a storm, or we're coming out of a storm in our lives. Hallelujah. Just like the disciples, many times we find ourselves in the midst of storms in our lives. But we learn that if we're going through the storms, we don't have to be afraid because Jesus is in the boat. Woo-hoo-hoo! Glory to God. Jesus is in the boat. He's always in the boat. We, talk, we learned in the story about the disciples. Jesus and the disciples had gotten in the boat to go to the other side. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. If Jesus is in the boat with you and I, we are going to the other side. I don't care what storm come up or what storm try to hinder us. We are going to the other side. Hallelujah. Praise God. I also told you last week to stop telling God how big your storms are and start telling the storms how big your God is. Woo-hoo! Isn't that good? Isn't that good? Praise God. Don't tell God how big your storms are. You tell the storms. Everything that come up. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, glory to God. Tell them. Glory to God. My God is bigger than you. Hallelujah. Praise God. When we're in the midst of storms of life, saints, call on God. Quote the word of God. As I always say, find your promise in the word of God. Stand on that word. If it's just one word, stand on that word. Praise God. Say it until you see it. Confess it until you see it. Praise God. Saints, we need spiritual training so we can encounter the storms of life. So we can be victorious. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Your Bible is your training manual. Let me say that again. Your Bible is your training manual. Spiritual preparation always precedes victory over the storms in our life. Woo, let me say that one more time. Spiritual preparation, getting in the Word of God, standing on the Word of God, getting in the Word of God, praying, praising God. Get that you get prepared, praise God. And when you are spiritually prepared, you always proceed in victories over the storms in your life. Hallelujah, praise God. Saints, I want to admonish you to continue to trust God as you go through your storms. As you trust God in your storms, stay with the ship. Hallelujah, stay with the ship. Glory to God. Let me ask you this question this morning. Have you ever been tempted to jump ship? That's the question this morning. Have you ever been tempted to jump ship? If you're thinking about jumping ship this morning, I want to encourage you to stay with the ship despite the many problems and spiritual storms that we face. Stay with the ship, saints. When I think about staying with the ship, I'm reminded of the story in the Bible in Acts, the 27th chapter, about Paul. Glory to God. And we're going to look at it uh, in chapter 27, Acts chapter 27, verses 1 through 44. We're going to just go through some of them. Praise God. Praise God. Last week, we talked about how Jesus and his disciples was going to the other side. Praise God. And they got in the boat and they were on their way to the other side. I told you last week that Jesus was calming the storm instead. Instantly, he calmed the storm by saying three words. Remember those three words? Peace, be still. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But that is not the way way it worked for Paul in our lesson today. Paul was arrested. He was in prison and for preaching the word of God. He was seeking a final decision. He was seeking a fair trial from Caesar. He appealed to him. As a result, he took him two years. Two years, saints. Two years. Paul was sentenced, was waiting. He was waiting for his chance to sell to Rome 
to speak to Caesar. Glory to God. But the journey from Jerusalem to Rome, it, took, it was a fierce storm came up. As Paul was going to, to Rome, a fierce, the fiercest storm in his life showed up. The storm lasted for 14 days. Saints, that's two weeks. That's a long time for a storm. Praise God. The entire 27th chapter of Acts tells a story about the incredible storm and the shipwreck wreck that took place on Paul's journey to Rome. My God. During this journey, the fierce, the fierce temp tempters, or the storm as we call it, came up upon them. This was not a normal storm. This ship was against like a hurricane. The God gave force winds. The winds were blowing. The waves were, were, oh my God, everything was just in chaos. Just going, the twirling, the winds and the waves. And it was no match for the ship that they were on because this was a massive, massive and severe storm. So as we read through this story, we're going to learn from the men that were on the ship with Paul how not to respond to storms in our lives. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to learn some things. Verse 7 in Acts, the 27th chapter, in the seven verses, tells us that the progress of the voyage was slow, very slow. And in verse 9, a lot of time had passed, and it was late now, it was late September and late October. And it was really past the time that they should be sailing. So in verse 10, in the NIV, New International Version, Paul tells the men, he says, Men, I see that our voyage is going to be dangerous, disastrous, and it will bring loss to the ship and the cargo and to our lives also. Verse 11. Verse 11 tells us that the centurion or the captain of the ship decided to listen to the pilot and the owner of the ship instead of listening to Paul. My God, my God. So they decided, the pilot, the captain, and the owner decided, no, we're going to sail on. Praise God. Despite the warnings that Paul gave them. This is where we start to learn about the bad decisions that the men on the boat made. Praise God. Bad decision number one. Praise God. They listened expert worldly advice than godly advice. Oh my God. Oh my God. The captain of the centurion wanted expert advice. He thought he didn't want to listen to Paul. He was not concerned with seeking God's guidance. He wanted experience. He thought know-how, facts and figures. Oh my God. Oh my God. Well, we see it's bad decision number two. In Acts 27, chapter 12, verse, this is where we see the bad decision number two. It says, since the harbor was unsuitable to winter, the majority decided that we should sail on. Woo! Lord, have mercy. The second bad decision was deciding to take a majority vote. Paul offered them warning that this was a dangerous and disastrous time and it was past the time to sail we should not sell. Let's not sell. Let's just stay right here until the winter pass. But the majority decided they were going to sell on and Paul was outvoted. Oh my God. A major example. A example of a major vote in the Bible. I remember when Moses told the 12 spies to go over and spy to the land before they went over to the land of Canaan. Well, Ten of the spies came back with a bad report. They said, oh, no, it's true. The land is flowing with milk and honey. And there's great, but there's giants over there. We can't do it. Oh, my God. But then there was two. They said, let's go up at once. We can do this with God with us. We can take the land. But the majority vote was for the ten spies who said, we cannot go. My God, my God. The majority may rule, but the majority is not necessarily right. Let me say that again. The majority may rule, but the majority is not necessarily right. Praise God. Paul, Paul warned him that disaster and great loss was coming. 
but they ignored his warning because it seemed like everything at the moment everything was pleasant. The south wind was gentle and oh, it, it was just calm, and they thought everything was okay. But the, the wind began to blow, and it blew the ship out into the sea. And then a hurricane hit. Oh my God, the ship could fight the winds. This brings us to the bad decision number three. Taking matters into your own hands. As they were being driven by the sea, the men decided they were going to try everything they could to save themselves. Praise God. I'm reminded of, of taking everything, you know, things that matter into your own hands when I think about Sarah and Abraham. My God, that God had promised them Abraham a son, and it was taking too long. And Sarah wanted to help God out. So she influenced Abraham, convinced him to go into her, her handmaid, Hagar, and they had a son. Praise God, and he was not the promised son. I, Ishmael was not the promised son. That was an example of taking matters into your own hands. Well, verse 16 tells us that they secured the lifeboat. Verse 17 tells us that they, they tied the ropes around the hull of the ship to strengthen it so it wouldn't fall apart. They lowered the anchor so it would slow down the ship. They tried to take matters into their own hands. Saints, when we take matters into our own hands, instead of letting God handle it, we cause ourselves more trouble. Praise God. Praise God. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I'm telling you this morning, let go and let God handle it. Let go and let God handle it. You can't handle it. You are not big enough. God's got it. Praise God. Don't take matters into your own hands. Praise God. When we're tempted to take matters into our own hands, saints, remember, the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. Glory, the battle is not yours. It's the Lord. You can't handle it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Then we go to verse 18. Verse 18 in the NIV, it says, We took such a violent beating from the storm that the next day they began to throw overboard the, the cargo. Praise God. They were doing everything they could, taking matters into their own hands. They still were trying everything they could Praise God, to get safely to the other side. Praise God. Verse 19, it says, on the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard. They were just throwing things up to lighten the ship so that they could get, praise God, to where they were going to, to get to Rome without a shipwreck. Finally, in verse 20, Luke tells us that the terrible storm raged for many, many days, blotting out the sun and the stars. Well, in the Bible days, there was no GPS. So the stars and the sun were their way of guidance, praise God. So there was no sun no sun, and no stars, so they were just out on the ship, out there feeling their way, praise God, trying everything they could, praise God, to get the ship steady so they could get to Rome. Well, saints, when the storms hits us unexpectedly, we typically try to fix things ourselves, don't we? My God, my God. Well, the men tried everything they could, and nothing was enough. They were ready to give up. They were ready to give up, throw in the towel, and say, we, oh, this is too big for us. They were ready to just give up. Saints, now is not the time to give up. Don't give up, saints. Don't give up. When we give up, we allow the storms to destroy us. Don't give up, saints. Don't give up. And learn from these men's bad decisions. Number one, listen to God instead of man. The scripture said it's better to obey, obey God rather than man. Number two, don't take votes. Glory to God. And number three, don't try to take matters into your own hands. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? Praise God. Well, at this desperate time, Paul stood up and encouraged the men. That night, he stood Threaten the, the crew with the assurance that we can get, we, we will get through this. We will get through this. As it's seen in Acts, the 27th chapter, the 21st through the 26th verses. You can read that, praise God, about midnight. 
The sailors suspected that they were nearing land. They could hear, praise God, the, 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 the um, crashing of the boat was crashing up against the sea, and they could hear that it was it's hidden on the seashore. Praise God, praise God, praise God. That, but then the, the men on the boat, the sailors, Paul's shipmates, they were seeking to escape from the boat because they had given up hope. They had lost hope. No hope. Praise God. They started to lower the boat, the ship, the little boat, into the sea, and they was under depression. The pretense that they were they were down there laying out, out the laying out the anchors, but really they were trying to jump ship. I asked you earlier, have you ever been tempted to drunk jump ship? Well, these shipmates, these sailors were they were tempted to jump ship. And then in verse twenty five, Paul says to them, "Well, verse four, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be." Even as it was told me. Praise God. That's one of my favorite scriptures. I believe God that it shall be what God told me, what God told you, it shall be. Hallelujah. Praise God. After Paul's encouragement, they sailed three more days. And then at midnight, the word that Paul gave them came through. Paul didn't say, I told you so. We shouldn't have sailed. It wasn't the time to sail. It was too dangerous. We should not have sailed then. We should not have taken off. Praise God. But he encouraged the people. He, he encouraged the sailors. He encouraged them. And the, when the, the sailors heard that the ship, the waves was crashing against the shore, the shore, the, the shoreline, they could hear crashing in, on the land. They dropped it the, immediately. They dropped the anchors and they be, began to pray for sunlight, for daylight. Pray for daylight. Praise God. Pray. The sailors decided to save themselves by escaping from the ship. They decided they were going to shake, escape through the lifeboat. But instead, Paul of Paul's encouragement that God was with them and that no harm would come to them, they still want to take matters into their own hands. I told you earlier, you can't handle it. I don't know who I was talking to. Let go and let God. Praise God. In verse 30, it tells us that they pretended that they were lowering the anchors, but really they were trying to get to escape. They were trying to escape to safety. But Paul saw what they were doing and he knew that that was not, not God's plan. He told them, no, no, no. Verse 31, Paul exposed the, the sailors to scheme what they were doing. He went to the, the, the centurion or the captain of the ship and he told them what they were doing. But he formed, informed the centurion and the the owner of the ship, that if they were going to survive, they must stay with the ship. Glory to God. They had to stay with the ship. That was Paul warning to them and it is admonishment to them, stay with the ship. Meaning, if most of our storms in our lives can be avoided if we simply listen and obey and stay with the ship. Glory to God. Acts the 27th chapter, we look at the 31st, 33rd through the 44th verse. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to read that and go through several scriptures. As the story concludes, we see that everything happened just like Paul said. Remember he said, I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Glory to God. He encouraged him to stay in faith, to have faith. And they had fancy they were Oh, they were so distraught that they didn't eat. Praise God. I imagine someone was just, they just could, didn't, couldn't eat. Some people, when they get upset or things are going, they don't eat. Well, these men didn't eat. Paul admonished them and told them to eat. And they did. Praise God. And when daylight came, woo, they saw land and they thought everything was good. Oh, my God. It's all better. But then the ship hit a sandbar, which in our terms is a, a sinking sand. We call it sinking sand. <laughs> oh, a quicksand, we call it. Praise God. But just as Paul told them that the ship would be destroyed and every single man would make it to safely to the land, that's what happened. The ship and the shipmate, that Paul was on the ship and the ship that they were on, it shipwrecked. Oh my God, the ship was torn into sunder, and there were pieces and boards and everywhere, 
But Paul admonished them. And I admonish you, stay with the ship. Stay with the ship. Stay with the ship. Paul told them, if you stay with the ship, you will not, you will not lose your life. Well, they, we notice in verse 44 that some of the boards and some of the pieces of the ship, each one of the, the sailors or shipmates grabbed a hold as a float. They got, grabbed a hold to those pieces and they were holding on to dear life. Praise God. But before they were able to survive the storm and the shipwreck, they had to stay with the ship. Saints, we got to stay with the ship. They began to catch hold to the pieces, catch hold to boards. They stayed with the ship. I'm telling you this morning, I'm telling you this morning, saints, stay with the ship. Hallelujah. Likewise, if you're going to survive the storm that you're in right now, you need to stay with the ship of Jesus to live. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And what I like about being in the ship of Jesus, you don't have to worry about his ship getting shipwrecked. Wrecked because the captain, which is Jesus, of our souls, he will navigate us through the storms of life. Isn't that good? Praise God. Praise God. He knows how to help us survive our storms. But we got to stay with the ship. Praise God. That's the point. You're going to hear me say that again and again. That's the point I'm driving home this morning. Stay with the ship. Saints, if you stay with the ship, your storm will pass. But if you don't stay with the ship, praise God, the storm will not, you will be in the storm. Just like Paul and his shipmates. Praise God. If the ship of Jesus, if the ship of G in the ship of Jesus, just like the boat, in the ship of Jesus, stay with the ship, stay with the ship, in the ship of Jesus, that's peace. Woo, hallelujah. In the ship of Jesus, that's healing. Praise God. Stay with the ship, stay with the ship. In the ship of, of Jesus, that's joy. In the ship of Jesus, that's blessings. In the ship of Jesus, that's peace. In the ship of Jesus, that's deliverance. Stay with the ship. Stay with the ship, saints. In the ship of Jesus, that's love. In the ship of Jesus, that's peace again. I can't get away from peace. In the ship of Jesus, there is peace. In the ship of Jesus, there is eternal life. In the ship of Jesus, there is salvation. If you're in the ship, saints, you are saved. But if you're out of the ship, you will perish. If you're going to survive the storms you're in, you need to stay with the ship. Saints, get in the ship. Stay with the ship. Get in the ship. Stay with the ship. All those things that I said, if you're in the ship with Jesus, blessings, peace, joy, whoo, glory to God, eternal life, salvation, praise God. Paul, in our lesson, trusted. He had confidence in he relied on and he leaned on God to bring him and his shipmates through the storm. Praise God. And because they stayed with the ship, they survived the storm. Glory to God. Shipwrecks in our lives may come in many forms. It may be a tragedy in our lives in hell. It may be a financial disaster or someone that's close to us may, may die. Praise God. But saints, I don't know what your shipwreck is this morning. But I stopped by this morning to tell you to stay with the ship. Praise God. Amen. 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 Well, praise God. I pray that you've been blessed by the word of God this morning. Saints, stay with the ship. I don't care what it looks like. Stay with the ship. If you got to hold on by just a little thread, stay with the ship. Stay with the ship of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to admonish you the saints this morning to continue to quote the entire Psalms 91 and the blood of Jesus over your lives and over your family's lives. Praise God. Stay connected, saints. Stay connected. Praise God. And continue to give your tithes and your offering. I want to thank you and I admonish each and every one of you for continuing to, to give your tithes and offering. Being faithful to give your tithes and your offering. You can give on the app, Givelify, or you can give on PayPal, or you can drive by the church and put it in the mailbox. As I always say, our mailbox is our tithe box right now. But praise God, I want to thank you again for being faithful, faithful, faithful.
faithful to give your tithes and offer. God rewards faithfulness. Praise God. And because you're giving your tithes and offering this morning, according to Proverbs, the 28th chapter, and the 20th verse. Proverbs, the 28th chapter, the 20th verse, the first part of that verse in the NIV, it says, A faithful man will be richly blessed. Praise God. In the King James, a faithful man is bountifully blessed. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Richly, that word richly in the NIV uh, translation, that word richly means elaborately, it means generously, and it means plentifully. I declare this morning, saints, oh, glory to God, because you're faithful to give your tithes and your offerings. You are elaborately, you are generously, and you are plentifully blessed. Praise God. Do you receive that? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Well, if you're watching this morning and don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I admonish you to make Jesus your Lord and your Savior this morning. If you're in a back sitting, slitting condition, come on back to the family. Come on back to the family. It's a good time to come back to the family. If you need power in your life, it's a good time to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I invite you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior today. Praise God. If you look out of a church home, you don't have one, and you're looking for one, I invite you to consider our church, VLCC. Praise God. It's a good church. Praise God. And we would love to have you. Well, if you repeat after me, let's repeat the sinner's prayer. Let's go through this prayer together. Repeat after me. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I'm sorry for my sins. And I need your forgiveness. You said in Romans 10 and 9, that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Praise God. At this very moment, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart and I accept Jesus as my Lord and my personal servant, Savior, according to the word right now. I am saved. Well, praise God, praise God. Welcome, welcome to the family. If you prayed that prayer, I welcome you to the family of God. Praise God. Well, saints, it's been good this morning. It's been good, it's been good, it's been good. I cover you and each one of your, you and your families in the blood of Jesus. In Psalms 91, I declare no plague shall come now your dwelling. Praise God. The Lord shall give his angels charge over you to keep you and your families in all your ways. A thousand shall fall at your side, ten thousand your right hand, but it shall not come nigh you. Praise God. I want to let you know that something good is going to happen to you today. Praise God. Stay with the ship, saints. Stay with the ship. Praise God. Praise God. Well, let me bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, grace, mercy.